and that I will, to the utmost of my skill and ability, to the utmost of my skill and ability, promote the peace and prosperity, promote the peace and prosperity, and maintain the lawful rights, and maintain the lawful rights of the said state, of the said state. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Governor. Republican Chris Christie of Morris County is sworn in as New Jersey's 55th governor during inaugural ceremonies at the Trenton War Memorial. He promises change, proclaiming a new era of accountability and transparency has arrived with his inauguration. Well, it's been a big day for the new governor, and it's not over yet. The inaugural celebration is getting underway at this hour tonight, hours after the newly sworn governor gave his noontime inaugural address at the War Memorial. Well, the scene has now moved north to Newark, the state's largest city, where folks are arriving for the party celebrating the day. Senior political correspondent Michael Aaron is standing by live at the Prudential Center in Newark. And Michael, I understand it's a party and not an inaugural ball, as it's been called for a time immemorial. Jim, it's been 12 years since Republicans have had an inaugural ball, and this one, you're right, is not a ball. This is being billed as a cocktail party in deference to the recession that we're in. It's business attire, not black tie. There are over 2,000 people here. They paid $500 per person to be here. I'm joined by our State House correspondent, Zachary Fink, who's covering this with me. Uh, there was a mass this morning, an inaugural mass. NJN brought live coverage of the mass and the swearing in to you. Uh, we're live here at the Prudential Center in Newark. Earlier today, Chris Christie took the oath of office as New Jersey's 55th governor. Uh, your thoughts on that ceremony? Well, the ceremony was, was interesting to see. Chrissy gave, a, I thought, a, a very uh, well-received speech to the crowd. Um, it's interesting you talked a little bit about tonight, and Jim had mentioned it in the introduction, how it's not really a ball. Uh, people in cocktail attire, as you see behind us, dressed not in their normal tuxedos. Uh, there are a bunch of food stations here from around New Jersey, which is very interesting. You have Saltwater Taffy from Atlantic City. You have Hobby's Delicatessen, the famed Jewish Delicatessen in Newark, with a station over here. So they're trying to give sort of a, a real Jersey feel here tonight, Mike. And there's some uh, nice turnpike and interstate highway signs all over this building. Uh, as I said earlier, the governor took the oath of office. Let's hear some highlights from the inaugural address. Whether you voted for me or not, whether we have agreed or disagreed in the past, today I am your governor. It was a call for unity. It was a call for reconciliation. To Governor Corzine, I thank you for your decade of service to our nation and to the people of New Jersey. Your focus on the health of all of our children is something for which many New Jerseyans will long be grateful. I thank you, sir, for your service. New Jerseyans are dispirited, said Christie, but he expressed confidence that he can get the state economy growing. Yes. We will have to cut some programs and transform others to get our budget in balance. And yes, we will have to curb municipal spending where there has been too little control. And yes, we will have to restrain state government. Twice he brought up school choice and charter schools. Yes, we will have to make better use of the resources showered on education. Yes, we will have to hold schools accountable and give people the choice to pursue alternatives to schools that fail our children. We talked about the state's advantages, its diversity, transportation links, its scientists, and singled out five New Jersey heroes, as he called them, who have done extraordinary good works. But the main themes were changes here, and the state will be a home for growth again. One surprise was when he brought the new legislative leaders up. And join me in a handshake of resolve and friendship. That produced a standing ovation in the packed Trenton War Memorial building. No more blame games, he said. No more acrimony. We have shaken hands as a symbol for our citizens of all that is possible in a future that demands that who gets the credit finally takes a back seat to doing something worth getting credit for. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Before Christie spoke, Chief Justice Stuart Rabner swore in Kim Guadano, the state's very first lieutenant governor. The 47-year-old governor pledged lower taxes and higher growth, 
and spoke for 26 minutes with characteristic self-assurance. One person can make a difference. I will make a difference. He promised transparency, accountability, and hard work every day. Believe me, I did not come to this office for failure. I came here for success. We're waiting for the official program here to start. It was scheduled to start at 7.30. For reaction on that inaugural address, I'm turning it over to Zach. Zach? Well, Michael, it was well received by both Republicans and Democrats, and we got some reaction from both. With the inauguration of Chris Christie, New Jersey will now be governed by a Republican with a Democratic legislature. The change was noted by many of the dignitaries we spoke with after Christie took the oath. I think it's what it's doing is restoring us back to a two-party balance, which I think is very important. I mean, and I will say it, I had Republican legislature, and there were certainly times when I thought, I wished I had one house that was in the hands of the other party. And I think it's better for everybody involved when you have a little bit of that tension there. I've actually had a nice meeting with the governor-elect last week, um, and I'm um, very impressed with his self-assuredness. I mean, he's got a challenge. He knows he has challenges. And to have that sense of stability, that sense of um, comfort level with oneself is a very important character trait. During the transition, Christie pointed several times to the structural deficit he is likely inheriting. Listen, I had a $3 billion deficit. Other governors, the same thing. Uh, he's facing the same thing we all faced. And uh, like you said, now it's uh, you can't blame others anymore. It's... You're the man, so when you're the man, <laughs> it's up to you to get it done. At one point during his inaugural speech, in Christie invited the two Democratic French. leaders from the legislature, Speaker Sheila Oliver and Senate President Steve Sweeney, to join hands in a show of unity. It was a demonstration that Christie wants to work with Democrats to solve the state's problems. I thought it was a nice gesture. Everybody said, you look surprised when he called you up. And I was, but it was a very nice gesture that he showed of willingness to work with us, and, and I was thrilled that he did it. I think that he also uh, understands that it's going to take uh, all kinds of uh, diverse and divergent opinions to get things done, and I think he made an admission of that when he said that he doesn't possess all of the answers. And you know, Governor Christie is, is, is new to state government, and uh, while he is certainly a quick study, and is capable of hitting the ground running, there are a lot of veterans in this town with a lot of experience that can help him get to where he wants to get a little quicker and a little easier. But while the leaders are all vowing to work together on a bipartisan basis, lawmakers say they expect strong action on the part of the new governor to fix the state's problems. I think the time is now for dramatic action. I mean, right now there are solutions that have been identified. We need to figure out ways to make sure we've got, you know, that we lower the highest unemployment rate in the region. I think we need someone who's bold and unafraid to, to tackle some of the, the very difficult fiscal issues that we're facing. And Chris Christie is off and running. It's the first time a Republican has been sworn in as the governor of New Jersey in quite some time since Christie Whitman. He's expected to sign a number of executive orders within the first 24 hours, and we should be hearing more about that tomorrow. I now turn it over to Michael Aaron. And Zach, the program has begun here. Inaugural co-chair Bill Palatucci is setting it up. The governor's brother, Todd Christie, will be next. As Zach referred to, uh, this is the first Republican inaugural since 1997. It's upbeat here. Should be an interesting night. We'll have more about it on tomorrow night's news. I'm Michael Aaron with Zach Fink. Back to you, Jim. All right. Thank you, Michael and Zach.